So today we're going to take a look at what is the meaning of a support location in the context of the IETF 16949 scheme. So guys, how would you, if somebody said, we want to get certification to IETF 16949, how would you define what should be included within the scope mm -hmm. of that certification? Let's say my manufacturing site is in Germany, mm -hmm. but I have a sales office in Shanghai, and I have a purchasing office in Detroit. Yeah. How does that fit within the ITF scheme? Well, uh, let's go back to that first question. What yeah. is a support location? So uh, our definition of a support location is it's a non-production activity which is conducted either on-site or remote uh, that supports one or more manufacturing sites of the same organization. Okay, so the two examples I quoted then, they under ITF speak then would be remote support functions. Correct. Yeah. Were they because they're in different countries? Yes. Yeah. yeah, but they're still part of my same legal entity. Yes. So could I say, can I exclude one of those? Because my American colleagues don't want to implement ITF in their office. Can I say we, we can ring fence that? No. 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 They both, both of those remote supports yeah. Yeah. have to be included within the If, if they're providing support to a site that is certified, then they have to be, it's not an option to include them or not include them. It's interesting, on some of the earlier videos, we talked about the number of certificates globally. There are about 75,000 yeah. certified companies. Each one of those relates to a manufacturing location. Right, okay. And those manufacturing locations may receive support from other um, locations that are part of that same entity. And as you said, a sales office or a warehouse or a design center right. or a headquarters. And if my organization is not yet ITF certified and we want to get certified, yeah. Would the auditor physically visit those two uh, remote support functions? As, as part of the initial audit, they would visit them. So again, we, we'll have, we, we need to do a whole other video on this. Yeah. But um, w there's a stage one which happens at the manufacturing site, and then right. there's a stage two um, audit, assuming the stage one were yeah. well, right. that, that would yeah. require well, support functions. Which would have to right. be done before the stage two but audit. But the short right? answer is, for the initial audit, the stage two, the auditor would, or auditor somewhere, yeah. would visit those first, yeah. then they would audit the yeah. site. Mm -hmm. Do the remote support functions get a certificate? No. no. So how would they be recognized in the certification? So they would be described on the certificate of the site. So there would be an appendix to that certificate which describes where that support location is and, and what that support location does. Again, right. that's a whole other video yeah. as well, just to um, explain the IATF yeah. terms for the support location activities. Right, I understand this is complex, yeah. but if we try and keep it simple then for, for the viewers, that if your organization does have any remote support functions yeah. that are part of the same legal entity, yeah. they have to be included yeah, within the scope of the certification. Um, if I outsource activities to other organizations, but it's a diff completely legal different entity, yeah. would the auditor visit those? No. no so sorry. what would I have to do? If I outsource, for example, some of IT yeah. to another right. external organization, what do I have to do? So you, you would need to demonstrate or you would need to think about and apply how you would control and manage that relationship with that separate entity okay. that you've outsourced. So if we had service level agreements yeah. with that IT company, if we did audits, yeah. if we did periodic reviews, yeah. yes, I would show that to the auditor as part of management of outsourcing. Right. Yeah. But the auditor would not visit that, no. that IT company. No. no. Right, okay, I understand. Okay, so I guess, viewers, it's important to differentiate between a remote support function, which is part of the same legal entity, and an outsource process where we might elect to use another organization to provide us services, 
but they are not part of our same legal entity. In that case, we must control them as an outsourced process. So, thank you for your input today. Thank you.